All right, so welcome everyone to the uh, 15 December uh, community call of the Cosmos SDK. Uh, so is there anything first you would like to add in the agenda? Otherwise we can go straight to it. All right, so quad team update, what we did is uh, this sprint is basically making uh, a beta ready for uh, for Twilight. So we focus on uh, auditing uh, all the modules of uh, of the SDK uh, from 046 to 047. Uh, we are almost done. And the next step after this will be uh, to have a beta and start a public testnet with a CMAP and hopefully as well with IBC as well uh, that will have migrated to 047. So we'll write some info, more information on the blog post about the public testnet and what's coming. And uh, we are we are then soon to have a 047. Well, DTI is first the beta, and then we'll want to test truly uh, with a public testnet. And uh, so uh, the beta should be ready by uh, this week or beginning next week. <laughs> Sound like February 2023. I don't. I don't think it will be February 2023. No. Uh, yeah, let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I think That's we enough. should expect it. You know, hopefully, if all goes well and the test net runs smoothly, like maybe in the first few weeks of uh, January. Um, especially since it's the holidays and things tend to move a little bit slower. But the auditing is almost complete. Um, so we're making good headway. Right. Next to that, there is uh, two working groups coming, and we would like to uh, to know who, who would like to participate in those working groups. And I will leave the floor to Bess to explain about the store working yeah. group is be leading. So we're going to have. Um, a working group for kind of the the general theme of um, the storage and and uh, just kind of a refactor of of um, storage um, primitives in the SDK along with the store package itself. Um, there's been numerous proposals and ideas floating around in various um, discussions, PRs, and issues on GitHub around um you know kind of the general themes uh surround the idea of like how do we make running archive nodes uh less burdensome less costly how do we improve query performance how do we improve ux around queries um and things like that there is a discussion thread that i started and github has a lot of good feedback so i think to kind of get the get the ball rolling we're going to have a, a working group um that's probably going to start in the new year i think it's going to be kind of tricky to start during the holiday season but um ideally i want to kick it off the first week of the new year um so we can kind of more formally start talking about these things i pinged a few folks in the cosmos tech channel on slack um uh, to kind of garner some interest so if you're interested in being a part of that working group either as an observer uh as an implementer as a designer or all of the above um just feel free to reach out to me um either on slack or personally and just let me know um but yeah that's that's mainly it and then i think we're gonna have a similar one for uh framework which is is a is a bit of a, a mixed bag of various things so i can let aaron kind of talk on that uh on that note Yeah, so the idea of the framework working group is that it's a working group focused on the SDK as a framework and uh, improving uh, the you know the core uh, tools that the SDK provides for building modules and building uh, chains. Um, so that covers you know how we build modules, um, some of like the the user facing storage layers. Um, there's the ORM. There's the new collections framework. Um, it covers the usage of protobuf. Um, there's discussions. There, there, and, and there's been ongoing work about migrating to the official uh, protobuf API away from GoGoProto. Um, there's other improvements related to 
uh, making it easier to build CLI tools with automatic generation. That work has been in progress. Um, there's also um, ideas about um, automatic generation of queries. Um, and then there's things related to um, just the separation of um, modules into separate Go modules uh, and even like cross version compatibility between modules, um, which is what ADR54 covers. Uh, and then there's discussions uh, around kind of intermodule message passing that are related to that ADR33. So all of that is encompassed in, in the framework working group. Um, of course, we can't do that all at once, um, but the framework working group will kind of choose the um, highest priorities and you know the lowest hanging fruits and try to go through and improve the SDK as a framework so that it's, um, you know, we kind of move past, um, you know, a lot of the technical debt that's been around for a while that we've, you know, been trying to, um, you know, we, we kind of get through the cycle of trying to improve things and it's really kind of first class framework that makes it really easy to build modules that are uh, reliable. So yeah, that's the idea there. And to apply for those working group, and this is, uh, we just have to contact you, right? Um, actually, yeah, I mean, you can reach out to me or to Marco. All right. Is there any, anyone in the audience that already feel like interested? Or you can do that async. All right, so next there were a uh, discussion uh, from uh, Daniel on uh, asking you here, do you want to explain this issue? Yeah, um, and actually, it kind of got simplified a little bit. There was a um, so the the idea is that uh, we would you know we would like quor a quarantine and san and sanction modules. Quarantine basically prevent uh, pre allows a user to uh, protect itself from dusting, uh, and then sanctioned is basically to allow the chain to comply with. Uh, laws uh that sanction accounts or you know um basically freezing assets um but so i did a big write-up here but then i noticed uh that you had a um a change to where mo uh, multi-send can only have one sender and uh the uh like with that change all of this basically gets simplified in the SDK. Well, yeah, uh, all of it gets simplified in the it, from what's needed specifically from the SDK. In that, um, like now, it can all be boiled down to one function call that just gets injected um, into the send module. Because basically, in order for that to work, it's the send module that needs to be enforcing all of this stuff. Um, and the uh, so I've, I've got a PR associated uh, with with this issue that uh, um, that basically implements this um, injectability injectable um, restrictions basically, um, and it it injects it, it, it. The restriction basically gets run either in send coins or uh, input output coins. Um, and it like all it does, you know, it calls the function. The function can either update, well, it'll return a um, an alternate to address, or it will return an error, or not, you know, or it will return the same to address. Um, but Daniel, can you just uh, more broadly describe quarantine and sanction accounts rather than their use case? Gotcha. Um, yeah. So the the quarantine. Uh, the quarantine module is basically an account would opt itself into quarantine. And then when, when somebody is sending that account funds, uh, instead of the funds going to the account, it'll go to this central uh, fund holder. Um, then, and in a, and a record of that will then be made. Um, then the, the owner of the, in, the intended recipient then uh, at some point would notice that, oh, there's quarantined funds for me and they would, you know, evaluate the sender or, or the coins or whatever. And then they, 
basically issue an accept or a decline to indicate, you know, yes, I accept these funds or no, I don't. If they're accepted, then they they go from the fund holder to the intended recipient. If they're declined, they just stay with the fund holder and are marked as such and can be later accepted if they want. It's just that uh, as declined, they won't show uh, show up in the broader uh, queries. Like they'll still, the funds will still show up if uh, if the query is specific, like from from one account to another another account. Like it'll still show up there. But if it's just, hey, what quarantined funds are available for me um, in general? You know, yeah. So mm -hmm. that's the. Uh, I guess that's uh, the major overview of the quarantine module. Um, and then, and I guess there's also some stuff in there about um, being able to set up automatic uh, accept and decline for various accounts. So if you've, you know, if your buddy, um, you know, you if you want to make it to where he can always send you stuff, then you can put up an auto accept, and it'll when your buddy sends you uh, funds, it'll just bypass quarantine for you um so is there like a tuple that you're storing of this address can send me funds automatically yeah yeah it, it's uh it just a, a an extra thing that would get stored in state um the uh and it's um yeah um it, it's basically it, it's a lot like just the state in an index um i guess there's you know it's the key is, you know, a prefix, um, the recipient address, the sender address, and then um, whether it's uh, it set up to be auto accept or auto decline uh, is is the value that last part. The, um, but um, and so it's a, you know it's a quick easy lookup um, for that, um, but the there in, in this write-up there's a bit of added complexity um because it uh when i wrote it i didn't know that um multi-send had been refactored to allow only a single sender mm -hmm. which simplifies a whole lot of the, this the quarantine stuff um uh yeah because it it de dealt so much with the senders that you know if there's multiple senders it gets a little complex mm -hmm. uh, the the sanction well, i guess yeah um are there any more questions on quarantine or should i just hop into sanction and discuss that uh you can this i mean i have a general yeah. question in terms of like what uh what are the storage implications of this but i mean we can discuss that after you you, you talk about um uh, sanctioned ones okay all right yeah yeah i'll definitely loop back to that so the the sanction uh, account is different it's basically um through governance proposals um uh or governance proposals would be submitted to basically to sanction an account um the uh, uh the u.s government does a lot of stuff where they say oh this person's accounts need to be you know businesses can't do anything with these people and here are a list of their accounts um and we're expecting that to start covering um blockchain stuff as well um I, what was it ofac i think is the o ofac i can't remember what it yeah that's the list that is commonly referenced um and what the sanction module will do is um you've got but yeah, so somebody somebody would put in a governance proposal saying, hey, these accounts are sanctioned. Um, and once you know, once voting's done, then basically the all the funds in the account become locked. Um, and you know, any sends that originate from that account uh just would fail, uh saying, hey, that that account's sanctioned. Um the kind of trickier part with this is that often those sanctions need to happen immediately. You know, for example, if 
if I looked at, at a governance proposal and saw that my account was being sanctioned, I could just empty my funds out before the voting period ended. So there's a need to have that happen immediately. And so the sanction module would have some governance hooks that would, if uh, at least our current thinking is that if the deposit is high enough, basically have a, the sanction module would, ha would have a setting for what that threshold would be. But if, you know, if the deposit is high enough, um, then the sanctions would happen immediately. Um, and, and then once voting was done, you know, if, if it passed, then the sanction would stay. If it failed, then the sanction would get lifted or that immediate sanction would get lifted. Um, and then, you know, uh, and then the module would also provide ways for unsanctioning accounts if needed. Um, but, uh, um, I mean, yeah, the sanction module is, um, for the most part, simpler than quarantine, uh, it, but it just does have the added uh, complexity that, you know, in some cases we want something to happen immediately, um, which, you know, it gets tricky and there's a whole lot of uh, room for abuse on there. And so the idea is that that threshold for an immediate sanction would be high enough that, um, if the governance proposal fails, uh, then the malicious person is then out a lot of money. Um, so, yeah, um, that's. But would, yeah. would you want us to module to actually live in the SDK, or you actually request only the bank updates required for that? Um, for to work. So when when I originally wrote this. Um, I kind of, I, I kind of expected the just the bank bank module uh, changes to live in the SDK. Um, obviously, you know the quarantine and the sanction modules. Um, like I know there'd be, at least with the sanction one, there'd probably be other chains out there interested in them. Quarantine, maybe not so much. I don't know. Um, um, but the. Um, yeah, the the main the main reason that I even you know made this an issue with the SDK is because there are changes needed to the bank module um, in order to enforce such things. Um, are those are those changes like super involved? I, I haven't looked at the details of the PR. Are um, they super like how, like what are the kind of changes are we talking about? So the. Uh, um, because of the uh, simplifying of uh, multi-send, uh, it ends up being pretty pretty easy. Um, basically, I created a new um, restriction or send restriction function type, um, and then added that to the keeper uh, or to the bank. Uh, yeah, the bank send keeper. Um, and and then added some functions for uh, basically adding new restrictions to the keeper. Um, and then uh, so that that was actually the more complex part. the uh, the changes to uh, send coins and input output coins were both pretty small. Um, it, um, I got a little confused because, the the there was a pr that uh simplified multi-send to be a single sender um and then and as part of that they also simplified input output coins to only allow a single input but then uh there was a revert because uh, there was a proto a breaking proto change in that original pr but then but that revert undid some of the input output coin stuff as well um, so this PR puts input output coins back to single input, uh, taking in a single input. Uh, so, you know, there's a little extra stuff there, but yeah, you can see here on send coins, basically it's just adding this little thing right here. If, if there is a send restriction function, run it and handle it. 
Um, otherwise, yeah, it does nothing. Yeah, you know, it's no no change. Um, and then yeah, I think the send I think the send right. restriction is pretty. Um, it doesn't seem too contentious to me. So, and yeah, um, I also, you know, there's a bit of a uh, bootstrap problem with with all that. You know, it's those a lot of the things that are going to use those restrictions are probably going to also need the bank module or the, a bank keeper. And so that's why I kind of structured it as a like an afterward thing. Um, you know, after the bank keeper has been created, you create your other modules and you're like, okay, I want the sanction module in here. All right, now I need to tell the bank keeper about the sanction module. Um, because, you know, the sanction module needs a bank keeper and the bank module would then need, to, you know, so. Um, mm -hmm. that's, uh, Do other people think that this would be useful for them or anyone else on this call? Do they think this would be of interest, at least this, like the generalized res restriction stuff on the bank keeper? Um, I hate it. Okay, I hate it. But probably <laughs> yes. Uh, Why do you hate it? What, what? Well, I hate it. Okay, quarantine just makes a ton of sense and, and, and full support. And I don't hate quarantine at all. The sanction stuff, I hate. And it makes a ton of sense. And, and so, like, basically, I, I, I likely support the implementation of both. And, like, you know, to, to the Provenance team, I actually want to say that, like, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are leading this work. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing is going to get around me hating it because I, you know, Bitcoin or crypto nerd and uh, the idea of having this stuff in code bugs me. But I also want to say that I, I do support it and I think it makes Cosmos as a whole safer yeah okay cool i mean that's good to know that's good to know uh i guess you hate it ideologically <laughs> yeah that that is precisely it yes in in the oh, okay. practical real world environment that we live in like mm -hmm. this is necessary and likely important code and when i talk about hating it yes i mean idea I, ideologically like i um can i say uh speak philosophically for 30 okay. seconds uh i think that it's very dangerous to let you know uh, actors other than chain governance decide these factors but um i fully realize that that you know this this code is likely necessary and i'm american i am american if you know i ever did anything that even looked like it might violate ofac rules uh that is 30 years so i'm in full support despite my hate okay well robert seems to also Robert says he need he needs it for as well. I think that's for Umi, right, Robert? So um, it seems like there's general uh, this, this would be useful. So I, I don't see a reason why we can't get at least a bank module API changes in, and we can maybe consider that. We could possibly consider that for 047, not to add too much feature uh, scope creep, but. Um, yeah, as long as the PR just has the core API changes, I don't see why not. We can, there seems to be agreement there, so we can review that and merge it. Cool. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Nice. Then is there someone from Agaric here or about vesting account discussion? If not, do you know what the the general uh, topic is is this like to upstream their vesting modifications to SDK? I think Aaron knows more than me on that, uh, but oh, okay. I have no context. 
But if they're not there, I guess we can skip until. Do you have more context, Aaron? Uh, not a ton. Uh, yeah, and if if Agoric's not here, if Jim's not here, then we'll do it um, next time. All right. Is there anything else that you want to discuss? Hi, I have yeah, two I questions. There are two short questions. Uh, the first one is that. Uh, uh since now we could uh, set any messages arbitrary messages in government proposal uh, submit the proposal and uh, we don't need to implement uh, proposal handlers for uh, for specific message i mean the the or original approach of implementing proposal handlers and registering the handler to govern router is this approach deprecated or it will remain compatible? Uh, sorry, um, I don't know if I'm, it's clear. It's no, it's very, it's very clear. Oh, um, awesome. yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, but I don't, I don't know actually answer that question. Maybe Omri or Aaron knows if legacy proposal I, the, the, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the question is, are, will leg, legacy proposal handlers be supported uh, for the foreseeable future, right? Yeah, I, uh, yeah I'm afraid that uh, registering the handlers, the legacy, the legacy handlers in government routers will be deprecated and even removed in the future. So if that is true, we will quickly migrate away from this kind of implementation Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah, I, so I you... can't say it's I can't say it's imminent. Um, but I, it may happen. I think that would depend on a gov uh, groups working group getting spun up again. There's currently no like active working group focused on that, uh, like there was when the changes were made. But I would say that if you do take the message based approach, that gives you the advantage of being able to delegate um, some governance permissions to using auth Z to um, uh, kind of like smaller groups using the groups module. That was like one of the motivations. Um, and there were lots of other things that we intended to do in the groups gov v2, um, including like fle flexible voting periods and, uh, and um, you know, flexible kind of um, quorums and weights depending on the proposal type. So there were improvements that, there were improvements that were planned. Um, I would consider those still things that we'd like to do, but we don't currently have the bandwidth to do so. Um, I don't think there's imminent rem removal, but a likely um, it, it, it's possible. And hopefully um, some of the changes we wanted to make, some of the improvements we wanted to make, there will be time to do it sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, I guess the question is like, what's the, what's the incentive to even keep using them or implementing new handlers, right? Uh, like, what that's do you a get out of handlers a, as opposed to using messages is, is your question? It's not what you get out of it. It's, it's more of a question for the off, um, person who asked the question. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I do. It's like if if well, the legacy handler will remove, uh, uh, will remain compatible. It will always be com compatible. We can, well, we are fine with the, the legacy proposal handler. But uh, if it is planned to be uh, deprecated and even removed in the future. We will consider uh, completely re uh, migrate away from it. Yeah, that's it. So I, th I think you're talking about handlers that you already have implemented. Is that right? Like you're not talking about new handlers, but yeah, yeah, you're I'm talking about the, yeah, yeah. I mean the existing handlers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think for we we don't have it um, planned to be imminently removed, and if there is a plan to do it, we will give people notice. I think that's fair to say. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, could think... I ask the... go ahead. Oh, okay, go ahead. No, I was just gonna, I was just gonna mention and say that I think the same argument can be made about params, right? Like uh, the params modules deprecated. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. And I have we don't no questions for params module. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the idea is the same, right? Like the modules deprecated, we'll, we'll have it in another 
we'll have it for probably another release or two, but at some point I think it's going to be completely sunsetted and removed. Um, and so like ideally application developers migrate to, to managing um, parameters, you know, manually in their modules. So there is there oh. is an upfront there is an upfront cost to my to the migrating. I mean it's really trivial, but there is a still a cost. But I think the benefit the benefits strongly outweigh the cost of managing having modules manage their own mod, uh, params. So in that subject, I have a little bit of feedback. In fact, I was migrating uh, the um, legacy proposal to like a new framework, and um, yeah, I mean it's not that trivial mainly because um like two things right like the interface changed and also like you need to correctly query the proposals and the second thing um like the uh api doesn't work in fact um this week i discovered uh, a bug. are you talking about are you talking about params or gov gov oh, okay and um this week I discovered, in fact, like a bug. I'm not sure if it's like related to the migration we did in uh, testnet or um, or a or a gov handler. I'm just like sending now two links. So basically, this represents a migrated soft software upgrade proposal. No, sorry, not migrated. That represents a new software upgrade proposal, and. Um, it's properly handled by the v1 beta 1 but it's not handled by the by the v1 link uh, so everything works in cli but it doesn't work for the indexer so for example pink pack pub uh, it uses v1 beta 1 uh, and it won't see the content so like Probably today or tomorrow I will like need to debug it, but like if anyone has an input that I would like appreciate, maybe we are like the first one to like use that new new software upgrade proposal in a in um in a testnet. Yeah, so as you see that here you have a content node. And if you like open the second link, you see it properly. So this is the new new software upgrade handle method. Um, and uh, as a user, are you pleased with it? No, as a user, you are not because it, it basically breaks the um, the indexer. So if you, I don't know, like in the pink scan, oh, but in the pink pub, oh, I see. Like in the pink pub, pub, yes, you will have an exception, and basically pink gotcha. pub open stage won't work. Yeah, that's a problem. Um, would you say that that's uh, like, do, do you feel that that is a problem on the SDK side or do you think it's a problem on the UI side? Uh, a good question. So first, I mean, uh, uh, I was like planning in fact yesterday, but I discovered like another bug in Tego. <laughs> so like, like finishing it now. And uh, we are also like doing like, Kind of a stuff with custom wasm and the custom wasm build is like completely different, yes, because it it required. I mean, it breaks like the whole build process. So like that took my time, but um, yeah, I'm going to test it with SDK CMD and see if uh, CMD um, will work with the um, uh, REST API. And if not, then I I would like really flag it as something urgent and critical, and could probably also like. Uh, impact all uh, forty-seven. Okay. Um. Just since, just just so that we don't like take over the rest of this call, do you have fifteen minutes to talk after this call? Because we just uh we just updated uh Cosm Wasm v zero point thirty point zero for SDK. 46.7 and and if you'd like i'm happy to sort of walk you through that yeah sure uh let's chat on the back cool all right After the call. and then i seen you mentioned some you want some update about uh the liquid staking module right yeah yeah that'd be great
Yeah, I, I believe, Bess, correct me if I'm wrong, that he will not be included in uh, 047, uh, but will quickly made afterwards. Uh, well, quickly, we'll make a 048 that includes uh, the uh, liquid sinking module. Right, Bess? 048 will include what? Say that again? The liquid sinking module. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Wait, I don't the uh yeah, I think we have the staking changes in in 047 if I'm not mistaken, but I think the module itself will be 048. I don't I, I don't know, I need to ask Marco. Yeah, we have the highest change in the 047 already in uh I'm not sure about the stake. But all right. Okay, um quick yeah. Um tell you guys what. I, I'll like I'll look at as or let's all ask Marco because you know he's amazing. Um, the the reason I'm asking is just like that's mm, LSM is 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 probably one of the drivers for Cosmos chains to update forty seven, and I just share with everybody like you know we we promoted forty six very heavily at Notional. Well, and generally, I, I think we can safely say that 46 has failed. Um, the, the, uh, nonetheless, it is our hope as a multi-chain validator and like multi-chain maintainer that we can get to a place where the Cosmos culture uh, is, you know, actually using the latest release. Uh, so that we're all kind of contributing to the same code base, even though that, you know, obviously there are coordination challenges and stuff, but like, I think the payoff there would be tremendous. Well, I mean, I think everyone should be highly, highly incentivized to use 047 because that's the uh, first uh, release with a the ABCI++ changes, right? So, I mean, there's just so many benefits to 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 upgrading the 047 that I think it kind of goes without saying. Yeah, but yeah, I mean 04, 046 does seem to uh, I I tend to agree with your sentiment there. Yeah, to be honest, I don't like this comment. Uh, I I mean, like 46. I mean, is is there anything in 47 which uh, like kind of uh, was like a removing a feature from 46 or like a removing a logic from 46? Mm, not that I know of off, the, off the top of my head, no. Yes, exactly. So like, I mean, 46 is, 47 is just an iterative upgrade. It, it doesn't change like the way what, in a way like, you know, 46 was designed. So like saying that you know 46 is rubbish and 47 is not. Oh, of course 47 is not. I hope, <laughs> right? But you know, 46. Well, I, look, I, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. For example, you know, the groups module is rubbish, or that the ideas implemented in 46 were rubbish. In fact, I'm very specifically saying that 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 46 has been has proven to be rough from like a chain security perspective. The ideas in 46, I, I remain fully bought into. Um, and, and actually I believe that if 46 had had wider adoption with more chains, that we would have ran into these issues faster uh, and eliminated them more quickly too. So please, please don't, uh, you know, anybody on this team who worked on 46 or on this call who worked on 46, please do not interpret uh, my commentary on 46 as, uh, as bashing yourself or bashing the ideas that drove 46, because I still to this day believe they were quite solid. Yeah, I'm just trying to say that, you know, people who will like try to jump directly for 47 will complain as well. Like because there's additional work to do, additional le learning, additional migrations, and so on and so forth. And yeah, there were bugs. There will be bugs always, unfortunately. 
Yeah, I mean, well, you know, part of it is we we work in frontier technology with a lot of risk, and personally, I'm cool with that. Like, I'm I'm very happy that we all get that privilege. That's why everyone will be invited to test, try to test uh, 047 in the public testnet that will be coming. So, well, you guys are invited to to try to break 047 and find all the issues that arise. Yeah, to be honest, uh, like. To be honest, like most many of the issues you, you find when you do the migration, <laughs> like usually when you start a, a new chain, that's like this is the easy part. <laughs> the hard part is when you have your custom logic and 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 then you need to um, update it. Yeah, actually, Robert, you're right, and we should consider maybe even making that test net. Uh, I don't know where we're planning this test net. Uh, but we might even want to like do a state export of Gaia or even Umi and then run 47 because Robert, you're completely correct. If there's no migrations, it does not expose all of the possible problems. That's a fair point. Uh, but just because we're running out of time and Jim is here, maybe we can go back to the uh, vesting account point that we had on the edge in there. Jim, would you want to uh, comment on that? Yeah, I, I assume this is uh, uh, regarding the uh, discussion that I just uh, added uh, this week. Is that correct? The vesting accounts, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. So there was some some discussion in the last meeting uh, with regards to uh, the future of, of vesting accounts, and I had uh, done some work in this, so I wrote up my thoughts in uh, uh, discussion, and uh, I can provide a, a link here real quick in case folks have not seen that yet. Um, oh, good. There it is. Uh, so the uh, there had been some discussion before of changing uh, vesting accounts into vesting grants, uh, so that the properties of of you know what's now a vesting account are now uh, just on a grant by grant basis. Uh, it the, that could be like given to different accounts a single account could mix and match several different kinds of grants and so on uh but uh at uh we're implementing a uh, another related feature that we call uh liens which is another kind of encumbrance that you can put on the tokens uh in an account uh that prevent their transfer and i implemented that by abusing the uh, uh the vesting account mechanism to have the bank module query for uh for locked coins uh to to make that apply to to accounts of all types and uh to make the bank module query them and then uh to to then uh, uh, service that you know get locked coins call uh, from different uh, backing data and then implement liens that way uh, and furthermore with uh, the clawback vesting accounts we kind of have two separate dimensions of lockup we allow a uh, an unlocking schedule that is subject to clawback for the unvested tokens. And then uh, an unlocking schedule that's not subject to clawback for things like, uh, you know, uh, mixing in regular vesting account semantics and uh, handling things like regulatory lockup rather than, you know, incentive token lockup. Uh, so the the picture that was taking place was the idea that. Uh, you can place an encumbrance on tokens in an account in one of several di dimensions. Vesting grants would be one application of that. 
liens would be another, and actually staking fits into that too. Uh, and with with all three of those with with all of those applications using the same mechanism, the interactions become a lot simpler. Uh, all you need to do is take a look at the the maximum encumbered amount along each dimension, and that's the the effective locked tokens. You know, there's there's more uh, details in there, but I just wanted to uh, put down and share what I what I had been uh, what we had been thinking about uh, because I uh, we hope to upstream some of the work that we've been doing. And uh, you know, this would be you know kind of a, a a great way to be able to do that. That's it. Interesting. Is uh, does anyone have any thoughts on that? There seems to be some overlap with um, the self. Uh, I don't know if you were here earlier uh, earlier on the call, but there seems to be a little bit of overlap with some of the sanctions and quarantine things that we discussed, uh, and and changes in the bank in the bank module. Yeah, the um, I guess you know, not not knowing what all was needed for the uh, encumbrances and for as far as restrictions go. Um, like it, it's possible that it would be basically the same mechanism uh, it could use, but uh, if not, then maybe you know it'd be worth you know changing the restrictions up a little bit in order to help uh, accommodate those. Um, yeah. Okay. Th thanks, Daniel. I'm. I'll, uh... Sorry, it was late. I'll go back and listen to the recording of the call to get context for the uh, uh, bank changes you're talking about. Oh, the, is that the uh, issue uh, fourteen one twenty four on the agenda? Restricted and quarantined yep. accounts. Okay, that's the one. Um, and then it, maybe check, there's a PR associated with it that has some simplified stuff. Uh, so maybe take a look at that and see if um if what you're needing uh fits into that and if not uh like actually you go ahead and feel free to comment on the pr and we can um or or on the issue or whatever just to you know because it'd be it'd be nice if that you know if we need to yeah there's a need to inject some of these restrictions into the bank module from ex external sources and it'd be nice to have it usable by everything that needs to use it so yeah yeah no this uh this does seems like it it would fit in because uh, uh let's say uh quarantine here wouldn't be interacting with with the uh with like the vesting or the staking or anything like that it this seems like this would be another use case like a fourth dimension of encumbrance that would be independently controlled and kind of independently um, go, uh, you know, in, in encumber the coins. Uh, quick question: Would would someone be able to uh, add and then remove funds from from a quarantined account, or is it uh, like is it quarantined at just a certain? uh funding level or would it be the the entire account so the um it, it's it's the entire account so somebody would opt yeah. in to quarantine on their account but you can also set up um auto accept and auto decline for various accounts as well so okay. like you could opt in and then you know say i want to auto accept from all of these accounts over here but anyone else will get you know the funds will get quarantined before uh, and i'll have to accept them in order to get them okay yeah that doesn't match so much or you know isn't an uh a slam dunk it like uh it, quite as much as i thought but i'll think more about it maybe there's a feature lurking in there that could be uh blended into the proposal to make it a better fit 
Yeah, and the main the main thing I wanted to get across was like any API changes that are needed. You know, make sure that they're like compatible with one another, and we don't kind of like have multiple APIs that do very similar things. You know, right. um, that's, yeah, yeah. That's just that's my only my 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 main concern. Yep, understood. Well, we're reaching almost six. So, does someone have any other questions? As well, I guess we can follow up on discussion here on GitHub. Uh, could I have another minute? Uh, I have a second question. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, is there any ex existing best practice for designing multi role admins? for a specific module? Yeah, I think no, and I think it's a really good question. Yeah, I Would think- you like a, uh, Would you repeat? Multi-role uh, admin? Uh, Multi-role admins. I mean, we have multiple admins for this specific module, and each admin have uh, have its specific permissions. For example, it could uh, lock the module or uh, any other, yes, job, uh, other duties. Are you referring? To, are you referring to the authorities of a module? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like this. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't. I guess I don't fully understand the question, right? Like, you if you design the module, can't you? You can have as many authorities as you'd like, right? Uh. Yeah. The basic way we can do this is that we have a mapping uh, that maps uh, admins to its permissions. Yeah, I think that's a simple design, uh, but I'm wondering if there is any existing uh, best practice to implement this. Will the permission yeah. be granular then per, uh, per admin or? Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, each each admin could have its specific role. For example, uh, one admin that could stop the guard bridge, and another admin, uh, that could uh, free smart contracts. For example, like like this. Yes, but uh, each admin has different roles. Yeah. So for this specific module, it has multiple. Uh, Admins. I don't think we have the best practices on that actually. Uh, not sure if it uh, makes sense if we could write one. I'm not sure. Is there actually any other module that has uh, this use case of multiple authorities? And uh, are you the first to develop a module like that? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. The background or the context is that we want a circuit breaker. Uh, so um, we, need, uh, uh, we need a specific admin that uh, could only stop uh, the gravity bridge when we monitor some uh, unexpected uh, event. So uh, this is why I asked about this. Well, I mean, we are working on a circuit breaker module, right? I mean, <clears throat> Aaron actually has a, a pull request that was merged that, that has the, the proto definitions and schemas defined with multiple admins and stuff like that. I don't know if that's what you're referring to, but that could be a good reference point to see you have multiple modules look or multiple admins look like. 
uh, this this circuit breaker module is a standalone is a standalone module, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Aaron, we we just merged a PR that has the protos defined. Oh, great! So, will this be included in the coming uh, zero forty seven? Unfortunately, no. I don't think so because we we just started on it. Um, right, right, Aaron. Are you still on the call? I'm not sure if Aaron's still on the call, but um, yeah, I don't think we'll have it in four four seven. But you can use, um, you know, um, so, sorry, I was I was muted, but um, we're planning to have it as a standalone module. Uh, so, so hopefully it would be something that you could integrate with 47 or 46, um, as long as you bring in the necessary anti-handler teams. Okay, thanks. Uh, but, but Aaron, you said that uh, we can expect it in 0 0.7? Well, I'm saying that we're planning to do it as a standalone module where you could integrate it with um, an existing release of the SDK. You would just need to make sure that you integrate uh, the required anti-handler change. Um, so, I mean, that's that's at least our goal is that it, it will be standalone and not part of um, not part of like the SDK monolith, um, if that makes sense. Like we're in general, we're planning for modules to be independently versioned in the future. But this is we're planning to do this as the first module that's independently versioned. Oh, okay. So hopefully we'll be out after forty-seven, but before uh, forty-eight. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we rush the top of the hour. But is there many? Is there any maybe last question? I see people are joining still. Maybe they did not did you know that uh, we move up the meeting of an hour. Uh, but if no one has a question, then I wish you uh, all a uh, very uh, Merry Christmas and good holidays. Uh, I don't think there will be a call in two weeks because it will be in uh, yeah in the in the holidays. I'm not sure. So we'll see. Uh, but. Have a great holiday, everyone. Bye. Happy holidays. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.